Okay, so this would be the last part of project one. Uh, I'm going to talk quickly because there's a lot to do. Uh, hopefully you can follow along. Um, so I'm going to use VirtualBox, not VMware, uh, simply because I think it runs a little bit faster on my system. So uh, importantly, uh, right off the bat, you notice I have my two networks I've already created here, Ethernet adapter not list, not numbered, and Ethernet net adapter number two. I'm going to use this one. I think that's the one from the project. Hopefully it's not. Hopefully you have to do your own work. Uh, more importantly, it has a DHCP server, which makes me think it is from that project. So... I'm going to double click on the Linux box, uh, the Kali box. Oh, I should have changed the name before I did that. That's fine. We don't have time for it. Uh, I would like, I can't change the name now because um, it's uh, booting up and it's, it's, it's uh, in action. Um, anyway, it's just a pet peeve. I don't, I'm not a big fan of this name. Let's also boot up the Windows 7 box at the same time and stress test my system a little bit. That's fine. No big deal. Um, so what I need to do though, um, from the previous lab, you might remember, and and I didn't change it already uh, off camera, but I did change the network settings. I'll show you me doing that. Uh, again, when it was initially uh, set up, I had it on NAT, right? And NAT, it has internet, which is fine, as long as I don't do any kind of uh, scanning outside that network. Uh, but in this case, I want to be on a, the same cyber range, the same network as my Windows box. Uh, so we'll put them both on that virtual network, uh, 10.20. 40.0 network. I'm going to hit OK. All right, let's log in. Uh, the screen is a little bit bigger than it was in the end of last lab, simply because I'm going to be listing out commands and the lists will be large. Over here, we do have our Windows box. This is kind of where we're going to leave it for now. Uh, let me verify it's on the proper network just to, uh, to save myself any headaches. If I did, it looks good. Great. Uh, let me minimize that and not worry about it for now. All right, here's Kelly. Uh, so real first thing we should do, like any decent person, uh, well, decent um, researcher, uh, is open up a notepad. Um, come on. Let's organize our window a little bit. It's getting a little uh, sluggy in here. What's going on? I thought I clicked on leaf pad. All right. There it is. Let's put it up top here. This will be my notepad. First thing I want to know is my IP address. What's my IP address? I'm always interested in that. What's my network? Uh, so Cali IP, let's find my IP address. Um, we'll make this a little bit long. Well, this one can be kind of small for now. Uh, if config, there I am. Here's my IP. That was simple. Uh, control shift copy. Let's paste it in there. It's a slash 24 as I can see from the net mask. Uh, if that's the case, let's figure out the IP address of my Windows box. Uh, use our good friend Nmap. It's quick, it's fun, it's efficient. Um, we're just going to do our network, which is 10.20.40.0 uh, slash 24. So I'll do the whole network. Uh, let's just do a simple na uh, network scan. Uh, I don't need to do... Um, uh, you know, check for um, uh, operating system and do port scans and all that good stuff. Uh, so these are the addresses that come back. Uh, it says I have four hosts up. Uh, that's to be expected, believe it or not. So again, I'm dot one. Here I am. Uh, I have a dot two. That's interesting. Uh, I have a dot three or 253. Notice it's a uh, uh, the based off the MAC address. They know it's Oracle VirtualBox. Based off the MAC address, they know this is an Oracle VirtualBox. Uh, of course, wait. They know this is a virtual. Uh, they they all know that it's a virtual uh, uh, Oracle box. Anyway, uh, so I can deduce based off the fact that my default gateway is 254. Uh, that 253 and 254 are my um, uh, DHCP server and my uh, default gateway. It's a little bit of guesswork. And my uh, my target is going to be my target uh, Windows box. So Win7 target is going to be 10.20.40.2. Now, if I wasn't 100% sure, I can go full roto router on this thing. Nmap 10.20.40.2. Um, and we're going to do a slash 32 on that's a host. Um, and I want to do an A, a, a full scan. And I think there's a command that I should do system dash DNS. Hopefully that's right. Um, 
Looks good. Didn't give me any errors. So system DNS just tells it to use my machine's DNS server, which I, I don't think I have one off the top of my head. But at least something can do to try to figure out what uh, what DNS name is. Um, so it's right now it's giving it a full scan, trying to figure out what operating system it is, what ports are open. Uh, I can't remember if that Windows 7 has a firewall. I think it does. So we'll see uh, what it gets back for an answer. Um, so here it comes. Not much. It has a virtual box, a NIC, which we'd figure. Uh, there's no hops. OS detects, per, uh, yeah, there's nothing there. All right. Uh, anyway, it wasn't able to figure it out. Again, I can, based off the fact that I know my default gateway is 254, I'm going to assume that 253 is my DHCP server, which I can actually find that out. Uh, by looking at my lease, uh, and so um, uh, 40.2 is my target. All right, let's bring up our good friend, Metasploit, and start building our command. What we're going to be using is MSF Venom. All right. By the way, this is this is uh, this is what I'm using as my Notepad. Right. So as I go through, um, so here I am bringing Metasploit up. Um, database has already started because. Why is it? Oh, I didn't reboot the system. Oh, I did. Didn't I just reboot the system? Interesting. Um, so it's starting up Metasploit. Um, so what we're needing to talk about right off the bat is MS Venom. Remember, M uh, Metasploit itself is just a giant collection of uh, exploits and vulnerability scanners. Um, and there we go. Uh, again, I don't get these references. It makes me feel old. Um, uh, so, so anyway... Here's Metasploit. Uh, we have a bunch of exploits. We have payloads. We have encoders. That's good. Uh, so what I want to do, though, is focus on MSF Venom for this project. MSF Venom. That's what we're going to be running to. Um, actually, I'll just do help. Uh, that's what we're going to be running to um, uh, create some malware. It's within the meta. Uh, uh, it's going to use some of the lot, a lot of the same vulnerabilities that are in Metasploit. Uh, so right off the bat, let's talk about some payloads. This is the actual thing. This is what depends the most really on our, our thing. So we're going to list the payloads. Uh, let me, f there's a lot of payloads. Um, is it plural? It's payload. Uh, and so I want to only focus on Windows payloads. All right. Hopefully I got that command right. Uh, I can't remember if it's list payloads or list payload. Uh, English doesn't matter. Um, so some other commands we're going to use, and I can bring up my notepad here, but some of my other uh, other commands that we're going to use, uh, we're going to talk about, well, we're, we're going to use encoder, we're going to talk, we're going to use in format, we're going to use output, uh, where we save the payload file, we're going to specify the architecture, um, which is right here, architecture dash A. Um, one thing we should talk about is encryption as well, uh, while we have a lot of Windows uh, vulnerabilities, so a lot of w uh, Windows to use. What we're going to focus on is this Metaper, um, say that 10 times quick, uh, Windows Metaper, Met Metaper, Metaper, uh, which is a shell program, copy, as you'll see, uh, via the uh, um, reverse hop, reverse HT, well, let's do the reverse um, one that we're going to look at, well, let's, let's just search on this so I can get a clearer picture of what we get, we're going to need. So let me run that command again. And this time I'm going to grep not just Windows, but I'm going to grep that particular um, interaction tool that we're going to use. We're not going to do VNC. We're not going to run a shell. We're going to do these metadepers right uh, up here. All right. These are 64-bit versions of the program. That's why they're x64, by the way. Um okay um so again patch bumper um i just there it is right there all right so the ones that we're going to focus on are these mentors uh and we're going to look at particularly uh these down here okay uh bind tcp and reverse tcp okay I'm going to do one that's a, a bind TCP, so that means I'm going to have to go out and actively connect with it. You could also run reverse uh, TCP, as it says uh, here. It will an establish a connection to the attacker. So it will go out and establish that connection with the attacker, as compared to the bind TCP, where it'll just run and it'll wait for the attacker, in this case me, to talk to it. All right. So this is the payload I want to do right now. So let's add that to my notes. Control, copy under payload, so dash payload. 
right? Uh, let's set up the architecture. Uh, so the Windows box we're going to be hitting is actually um, uh, x86. So that's what we're going to do. Let's look at that. We can list architects, uh, arcs, I think they call them, or arc. Uh, arcs, say right, arcs. Some are plural, some aren't. Oh, they're all plural for this. Um, so uh, this is going to list all the architects that we can go out, uh, architectures that we can go after. Uh, again, this is just kind of over specification, um, but I'm going to make sure we do it as compared to um, specifying it in the actual command. All right. I just want to make sure for extra, make sure it works. I'm going to specify it's for this architecture. All right, there we go. Uh, so again, we're going to grab x86. So I'm going to control shift copy. We'll do a dash A, control V. Now that we've established what architecture we want to do, we should do the encoder. What encoder do we want to use? Now let's talk about the difference between encoders and um, uh, encryption. Okay. So if I do encryption, encrypt, which we're not going to do for this project, I think it's just encrypt. Um, or probably encrypts. That would be weird to pluralize that. Um, anyway, so hopefully this will list all the encryption types we can do. So there's two types, two things we can do. We encrypt things, which is like what we're talking about. It's going to be asymmet uh, or symmetric encryption, right? It's going to be AES-255, base-64, which just uses 64, uh, uh, or XOR or RC4, right, to, uh, to encrypt the... Uh, um, payload, okay, to encrypt the, the, the code and the malware. Uh, also part of that, if I do the help again, right, I'm going to have to specify not only what, what, um, uh, encryption to use, but also, um, well, I'm sorry, right here, uh, what encryption to use, but also the key, right, and the IV, okay, and then, uh, I'm sorry, the initialization, uh, initialization vector, right, it needs to be specified those two things, so that being said, we're not going to be doing that, what we're, we're going to be looking for is encoders, right, so we'll list encoders, uh, I'm guessing that's pluralized, um, so uh, we're going to list the encoders here, now what encoders do is they go through kind of bit by bit, they're not encrypting, they're just changing the code, they go through a simple little process, it is kind of a form of encryption, uh, technically speaking, but uh, again, an encoder is just going to go through. Now, this lists all the different encoders they can do. Uh, you know, it's again, it's just going to go through and try to change the code around to make it difficult to detect for the antivirus. The one that's uh, very popular and also has a good success rate is this uh, Shikata um, uh, encoder. I'm probably saying that wrong as well. Um, but as you can see, it has, it's um, very successful, excellent, successful. It's poly, um, polymorphic XOR additive feedback enco encoder, right? So essentially, every time it executes, it's going to run some X, uh, XO uh, counter code to try to, um, again, uh, it's going to do the, you know, the binary uh, flipping, the, X, uh, the XORing of the code, right? I've noticed a lot of this stuff is XORing. So uh, encoders are essentially... Um, uh, 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 that kind, that kind of uh, product where it's just going to go through and try to change the code a little bit. All right, so we're going to run that encoder. I'm going to hit Control V. Uh, next thing we want to do is tell it how many iterations we want to run it. I don't remember what the project told me to do, but uh, in this case, I'm going to just do it 12 times. We can establish the format. Again, I have a number of formats here. I can list the formats. Um, sorry, that popped up. All right, so we're going to list our different formats we can do. Um, that was me checking my time, how, much, how long this video is already. I'm trying to keep it under 25 minutes, which will be difficult. Uh, so we're going to list formats. Come on, let's go. These are all the different output formats I can do. Um, we're just going to do a simple EXE, but you could do... Um, uh, you could do, um, you know, a D make a DLL out of it, a MSI install file. Uh, you can make an app uh, uh, um, for um, pushing out to uh, a PowerShell, you know, a, a number of um, uh, different formats that you can make it. So, again, we're going to just uh, format ours as EXE. So I say format EXE. Uh, now we have to establish an output. So the way we're going to deliver this via the project is we're not going to be super cool and have run an exploit and use um, the hard drive, uh, just uh, use an exploit to put it on the hard drive. What we're going to actually do is we're going to um, kind of cheat a little bit, but so be it. Um, 
it's the project was complicated enough. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this out and I'm going to do a, um, well, I got to check the status. So I'm going to, um, enable my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, HTTP server, which is Apache two. So it's going to be system CTL. Good. Uh, status Apache two. Uh, there it is. It's inactive. It's dead. It's not running. So let's start it. So I'm going to do system control start Apache two. Okay. And then we'll check the status again. Yay. It's running. It's running. And I can verify that by bringing up my browser, um, and, uh, loading up the loop back. All right. In the meantime, what it actually is running Oh, there it is. So let's just do, uh, 127.0.0.1. There it is. There I am. Exciting. All right. Where it actually gets that web page, where the web page is located, is under var www dot or not dot, but uh, HTML folder. All right. In there is the uh, index dot HTML. Uh, oh, see, I can I can there you see me prepping for this. Uh, I'll remove super cool. Not that it matters. Dot exe. That was me doing it last time. All right, um, so that's where we need to output this thing to. So I might as well grab it. I'll just make my life easier and copy and paste when I can. And control V. There we are. Uh, so what do we want to call this file? We'll call it uh, not malware, not mal.exe. All right. Um, so there you go. All right, so those that's going to be my command I'm going to run in MS Venom. So let me just grab this. Now what I'm expecting from this thing is to produce a exe called not mal. It's going to put it in the root of my uh, web folder. Uh, and it's going to uh, use the bind TSC, uh, Metaper, um, uh essentially Roman, 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 remote access tool. Uh, it will listen on a certain TCP IP, a TCP address, which is already established. Does it need more variables when I do that? Let me check. Um, that's right. It could, it, I'm, I'm thinking the other one, the reverse one, I'm going to have to set a reverse, uh, the reverse, I would have to set a remote host. I have to program it into the actual machine and I would have to do a local port. Uh, so, uh, to specify which local port this one, I won't have to do that. All right. So let's go back to, we're not leaf panning. Let's go to terminal. Uh, let's grab the other terminal. Uh, here it is over my Metasploit. Uh, I'm going to run that command now. So I'll paste that in. There I go. Uh, let's see. Make sure I don't get any errors. I don't think I will, but you never know. Okay. After a second, it's going to run. Uh, the next thing I need to do is I'm going to have to set the payload for, so I'm going to have to actually go out and, and actually, uh, download this thing. There you go. There it is doing the iterations of the encoder. I think I told it to do a 12 iteration. So that's going to run for a little bit. Uh, and then when it is done, uh, I should have the piece of malware, uh, running in my web server. There I go. It's been run 12 times. It is now there. So now I go into my Windows box, which I got fooled by by that. There I go. Um, and I'm going to do test user. Again, it's uh, don't off the top of my head. Don't get testy with me. Oh, I forgot the exclamation point. Don't get testy with me exclamation point there i go i'm going to log in i'm going to go into the browser here and i can go to uh ask me later i will be able to go to my uh web server 10.30.40 uh was i dot two or was i dot one see this is why i got written notes dot one dot one uh, I need to go to that file name, which is uh, not mal.exe, and it should ask me if I want to run it. Uh, I will run it. Run it. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, now, 
here's the funny thing. So because the firewall is running here, uh, this is why this software won't work. This malware won't work here. The firewall won't allow it. I would need network ad, uh, admin to work this. So you're going to have to figure out how to run the, uh, let's just face facts. You're going to have to figure out how to program the mentor reverse TCP command. Okay. Um, so we're going to list those payloads again. Uh, you're going to have to figure out the right command structure for that. Okay. This is just me demoing how it's going to work. You're going to have to actually figure it out, do a little bit of troubleshooting and figure this out on your own. Uh, I'm working on that mental agility. Uh, I just so happen to know the password so I can make this work. There I go. And now I should have the program running up here. Okay. Now that I have, uh, so again, list um, payload. Uh, we're going to grep. Uh, Windows, Metaper. I'm going to do the reverse TCP, but we'll grab this so we can just go to the list. Control V. All right. I'm just going to show you that reverse uh, TCP listener. Okay. So that's how you're going to have to get around the firewall. You're going to have to do the reverse TCP. So that's going to actually go out and negotiate. Also, you're going to have to keep in mind that you're going to need to um, uh, the you're going to have to uh, need to s uh, set some variables in the code because it's got to go out and communicate with your device. So remember, uh, our host is remote host. Uh, local port is going to be the port that you're going to be listening in on. Um, our port is the remote port and remote host. So. Uh, Go out, do a little bit of research. It's not that hard, uh, especially if you get the fundamentals down. All right, so we have this out. We need to uh, use a handler. Um, this handler is what um, exploit use. I'm sorry, handler. That's what I was trying to say. This handler is what's going to actually run to actually go out and make the connection. Um, oh wait, I was I was right the first time. All right. Use exploit. This is what I get for talking. Uh, multi. This is can't handle multiple multiple attacks. Uh, and now we do handler. I think I got that right. Okay. Uh, now that we've done that, we want to set the payload. What payload are we actually using? Uh, so in that case, it's going to be this payload. Control copy. Uh, control control shift V. Uh, so set payload. Good. It took it. Set uh, local. Uh, our host, who are you going to attack? Now, again, back on the reverse, you're going to have to set the L host because it's going to initiate the conversation. In this case, I'm going to go out and initiate the conversation. So I'm going to set up the, the remote host, okay? Uh, which would be 10.20.40, and I believe .2 is .2. All right. Uh, and then the, uh, the port, so by default, the port that I'm going to use, local port, uh, set L port to 4444. Okay. So I think we're good to go. Let me try typing exploit, see if we get there. Again, it's trying to connect, uh, contact up to dot two. And we are in the target machine. So uh, real quick, I can do a DIR. I can see that I am in um, the test users download folder, which makes sense. That's where I execute this from. Uh, I can, uh, let's CD back and do another CD back out. Oh, so I'm doing CD dot dot. Um, so let's look at all the commands actually uh, real quick. What I, all the various things I can do. Um, again, there's lots of different things you can do here. And we can spend a lot of time going over this. But if you remember, our project here is to get uh, files which are located in victims um, uh, uh, folder. Now we're going to run into an issue here where uh, test user is a standard user and victim is a administrator. Um, because if I do a DIR now, I'm in the users directory, uh, listing C users. Um, and if I do a, um, uh, if I try to CD into, and then remember I have to use parentheses here because um, I have to pass the full variable, including the white space. So if I try to CD into victim, it's going to be access denied. And again, that's because victim is an administrator and my user is 
not. So uh, well, well, uh, my way around that is simply, well, it's not simply. Uh, so we're going to have to do some things. Uh, this was a little bit, wasn't, a, was a little unexpected on uh, my part. And uh, so we're going to do a little bit of extra work. We're going to have to do a little bit of a privilege escalation, uh, which is going to be tricky. So let's um, get started. Uh, for, what we're going to use is if I do a PS, it's going to show me all the processes. Um, and if you notice, these are the processes that victim is currently doing. Now, uh, one thing I can do is use a module called uh, incognito. Um, and incognito allows me to steal um, user tokens, which is going to be important. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump around to another session and grab that user token. Now, um, I'm going to, again, run into issues with Windows, particularly with the, its security if I just simply try to run now if you notice these are the ones run by victim uh, our test user right victim test user that's the user that's running it uh, that won't help me to jump into any of those processes but and here's by the way here's my uh, malware right there um, so if I did um, oh by the way and to see who I'm currently logged in as remember who ran the the exe it was um, the test user that ran exe so I could do get user ID or UID, whoops, I missed the G, get uh, user ID, and I can see what user I'm in, okay? Um, so I need to log in as a different user in order to get to those files. Uh, again, if I just try to jump over to, so, so let me um, try to grab a, a, a let's, try, let's try to jump into VBox service, let's say. So if I do a migrate, over to that PID, um, which is process ID, which is VBox service 652. If I try to jump over to 652, I'm not going to be allowed to. Insufficient privileges, right? So how am I going to get around this? Well, we can do these other things where we do other exploits and other attacks using the very session that we're using. So uh, again, I have a session running. If I do a show sessions, I'll see... Oops, uh, oh, because I'm in uh, Metroper. So uh, I'm going to put this to the background, which I can do with this command. And I know it's session one, so show sessions, and it'll show me sessions one. That's my session. It's in the background right now. Uh, I'm going to back up and get out of the multi handler. Uh, and then I'm going to search the database, the, the exploit database for um, exploits, windows, uh, local, uh, and um, the description should say something about privilege escalation. Okay. Uh, now, I'm not going to pretend like um, all of this is um, uh, something I haven't already searched through already. Um, why did that? Oh, because that's why I should be exploit windows. Um, all right, that's much more hits. Uh, so this, I went through many of these exploits trying. Welcome to uh, hardcore hacking. It's a lot of just sitting around trying things. Uh, and I was able to eventually find uh, one that worked well. Uh, I'm looking for it. Um, nope. Um, let me tell you what, let me... Um, find it to save some well it feels like I'm close that's not it I've tried that uh, that's the system update blue Nova that's fun stuff um, let me uh, find it and save you the network the video time on that hold on for a sec okay after digging around I found it this one right here is an exploit that will pop up it tries to do a menu pop-up and it, it actually kind of fails but what it actually does for me, it pops up the process of Notepad EXE in the background. So I'm going to do Use. I'm going to put it in there. Um, so make note of that, by the way. I would copy and paste that into our notes. Um, again, Control-V. Um, and I actually probably put in some of these commands that I've been using in here, too, like uh, uh, use um, uh, the multi-hand uh, exploit. Uh, multi handler all right 
Um, and of course the and then the pay world, payloads and the set and all that stuff. I would put those in your notes. I'm sorry, I'm I've been ignoring my, the notes, but I'm trying to get this done. All right, so use uh, exploit Windows local MS13081 track pop up menu. As you can see, it's a relatively new uh, exploit from 2018. I believe, if I remember correctly, where's MS13, 2000, there he goes. That's actually from 2013. Um, uh, but it's specially built for Windows 7, so it, it seems to work well. Uh, well, it worked well enough to get the job done. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I have to, if I could do a show options, I can see. Whoop, man, fingers starting to fail. Show options. Uh, so it says I need, it's required to give me the session number. So I'm going to tell it to set the session to session one. Uh, that should be everything it needs. Um, there's only one target, so I don't need to specify a target. So all I do is tell it to run or I can do exploit. Same thing. I'll do run because I'm sick of typing at this point. Uh, and it's going to run. Now, hopefully it's going to it's going to it's trying to so the exploit was completed uh the big question is whether or not and i um whether or not it crashed my session which it can do i mean none of this stuff is rock solid it's not meant to be rock solid so let's go back into the session so i type sessions one gets me back in the sessions ps so far so good okay um, here I am, uh, and I got my norm, uh, my net mall. And if I look for notepad, I would expect to see notepad. And more importantly, it's not test user who ran it. So incognito is loaded. Uh, I'm going to take a bit, a bit of a chance here. I was successful before hopping around, um, first to Explorer, which is within my own user and then jumping over because Explorer is actually what launched Notepad if you look right here. Uh, well, actually, that's not true. Uh, parent PID is 2000, which is not Mal, myself, actually. So, I didn't try to, so I'm going to try to go right into there uh, by typing the, type, uh, tr um, the command migrate. Uh, and I'm going to just tell it what, what uh, PID to migrate to, in this case, 1600. Here we go. So migrate. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Worked. All right. Exciting. Uh, again, you're not hundred percent all the time. And now I'm going to actually, uh, move quickly because, uh, I want, don't want this to crash. So again, LS I'm in as victim. Now remember I couldn't, uh, CD in a victim. Now I should be able to, there I am LS. Hello. CD into documents. Documents. And then there I am. This is the cache that you need to get uh, and decode um, for a successful project. In this case, I'm just going to grab example. Um, my local CD, so I think it's get uh, local WD. I'm in as root right now. So wherever I download, I'm going to download it as roots. Um, matter of fact, I think I already, during my experiment out, out of victory, um, I... Uh, actually downloaded them all already so i'll just delete them all um uh, uh remove star.txt there should be any other text all right that's better okay so now i'm going to just down in this case i'm going to download um that was my victory lap when i got this thing working again i spent a good amount of time getting it working download um star dot txt no i don't want to download them all i want to just download an example dot txt that's what i'm gonna give you an example there you go i've downloaded it and now it is in root so we're that much closer to finishing up the project um now granted this is not the exact same line of code you would need uh keep that in mind uh so let's open this up let's cat let's all right so i'm gonna do a ls uh oh, ls Example should be there. Let's cat that example. Uh, .txt. So actually, I'm running out of video. Uh, that's what happened. Uh, this is the results of the cat. Um, I'm going to grab that, and we're going to, in the next video, I'm going to talk about how to uh, decrypt that information. So look for the follow-up video that goes along with this.